one tradition that was in all the sacred art schools around the world, I believe, because I've heard our nuns in other countries speak of it. And that was for the December 8th, which is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. There was a procession called the Lily Procession. And the children wore their white uniforms and feast veils, white gloves. And they went in procession here we used to put a statue of Our Lady down in the little theater on the stage with flowers on either side. And the children would be lined up on the uh, tiers down there in the little theater. And they would go in procession up to the statue. And in front of the statue would be four large urns. And each child was holding an artificial lily, a large lily. And they would go up and I think four at a time, and they would say, O oh Mary, I give you the lily of my heart, be thou its guardian forever. And then they'd put the lily in the urn and come back. And the next four would go up. It was very solemn. And the promise meant a great deal to many, many children. And uh, I know I did that myself when I was a child at Menlo. The other tradition, that was held here in the chapel was called Petite Marie, which is the Little Mary. And on the feast of November 21st, which is feast of the presentation of Our Lady when tradition said that she was presented in the temple as a little girl of three years old, the children had a practice before the feast of being very good. So a little first grader who was very good would be chosen to be Petite Marie. And she would have a beautiful blue um, dress, a long dress with a white veil and a little wreath of flowers on her head. And she would come in procession along with, if I remember right, 12 little girls who were her maids of honor. They would be the next best little girls and they would be all in white uniforms, they would have flower wreaths on their head and they would accompany her. And all, all the little girls would be in this Petite Marie procession. And they, I think they had benediction and then they had a prayer. It, for anyone who was Petite Marie, she remembered it the rest of her life. I mean, there are alumni today, the gray haired ladies who, I was Petite Marie. <laughs> the Christmas tr tradition which alumni remember fondly, was the nine days before Christmas, there was a practice of silence. And we had to keep, in those days, the students had to keep silence between classes. They walked in ranks and rows in silence. And so this was perfect silence, which was hard for girls to keep. And they, we had a beautiful, large, crib at the end of the marble hall. In fact, it, the father of uh, Father Carol O'Sullivan had made this and it was large. It filled up the whole end of the hall. And, uh, it was a, and in front of it were nine little steps. And on the steps were little lambs about three inches large. They, they still have some, I think, up in the archives. And each little woolly lamb had a child's name on around the neck. And those lambs began on the bottom step. And if a girl had kept silence that day, next day her lamb would have been moved up to the next step. And they went up. And hopefully they would all get up to the top by the Christmas procession where the baby Jesus was. And then they have a procession on the last day before school closed. And I think they voted for the one who would carry the infant and place it in the crib, you know, in the procession. But of course, um, some girls, some women today still remember my lamb never got to the top, you know. And others confess I used to move my lamb up when nobody was looking, imagine. Alumni, for some reason, that made such an impression on so many alumni that they still say, 
don't you have the lambs anymore? They just think that is, where are the lambs? Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs>